Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this storage box to hold the 6x9 die cutting plates. So if you have any of, I guess, the most common, the standard size, then this is going to be you know, perfect for those. If it's the A4 size plates that you have, then they won't fit in this. But most people have this size die cutting machine. And if you've got any of your smaller machines, so your little mini plates and stuff like that, they would fit in here as well. Now, of course, you don't have to use it for that. You could put something completely different in here. But I have made storage for 6x6 paper pads, 8x8 paper pads, and other things as well. So if you click on the playlist up here, you'll get lots of inspiration because they all kind of look the same. So if you haven't seen any of these and you think, actually, I want to make those, then you could make everything matching. Mine are all odd. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I don't mind that at all. They're, they're using papers that I love. And this one here, again, some of you might recognize it. I love this cat paper. It's the retro cat from the Dress My Craft Little Miracle. And I'll show you that in a moment. But I wanted something to use it on that I was gonna keep and see myself. And to be honest, this is gonna be probably the most used piece of storage in my craft room because I use my dies and these plates every single day. So it's very easy to do, very straightforward, doesn't take too long either. It's using grey board or chipboard, so it's nice and thick. It's a solid piece, the base as well. Literally, this is not going to fall apart. So let me show you how to make it. So this is the paper pad, The Little Miracle by Dress My Craft. Really, really nice. I have done a flip through, flip through of this when I shared it in one of my What Did I Get videos, I think it was. No, it was an actual Dress My Craft um, video that i done, but I'm just trying to show you. The other cat one, I'm sure. There it is. I'll just bring it up there, you can see. It's just so cute. So yeah, so that's the one I use there. I'll share all the links below. Now for today's, I'm using the Hydrangea Lawns by Dress My Craft, but unfortunately, I don't know where the top sheet is. I've looked everywhere and I cannot see it, and I'm pretty sure I never got rid of it, but it's gorgeous. I did make the circular hinged gift bag using this. And it's just, I love the hydrangeas. I think they look lovely. You've got all these pretty fonts as well, but look at all this. It's just so nice. And it's very thick. It's 240 GSM cardstock. So this isn't paper, this is a card, which is great for when you're making gift boxes and bags. So the one I'm making today, I'm actually making for my mum. So I've cut into one of these gorgeous papers because I thought she's worth it, so I don't mind. But I've got those pieces there. It's all deconstructed, so that's all of that, which I'll go through in a moment. But I do just quickly want to show you how I cut my grey board because many people do ask me. This is my Fiskars trimmer, and I basically, when the blades go blunt and they don't cut your paper anymore, and I, I mean by when it goes like fluffy and just starts to catch and buckle and it just doesn't look very nice, Pop a little marker on it, anything. I've just got black marker pen on this, so I know that they're no good for paper, but they're perfect for grey boards. So don't throw them away because they will still work with this. So I need to cut, this is gonna be my base. I'll talk you through the measurements for that in a moment, but this needs to be cut to three and a half by 10 and a half. So I'm just gonna line it up there. And this is a two mil grey board from Every Crafts a Pound. It's my standard grey board that I always use. So what you'll find you need to do is just run it over a couple of times on the top. And then you could now just snap that, but you it's best if you just flip it over and then go again on the other side. And now, already, it's nice and wobbly and it just comes away. Okay, so I need to cut that down to ten and a half. I'll do that way. So, just a little bit needs to come off. So again, over the top a few times. And then that way. Okay, so that's how I cut my grey board. So the sizes for everything, so that was the base that I told you, so that's three and a half by ten and a half. You need two pieces for your sides, which are two and a half by four. And then these two here are for your front and back, the sides, and these are nine and a half by four. So two pieces. And then to cover everything, so to cover the sides, you want two pieces that are four and a half by six. Okay, so I've got that lovely like script. It's just, a, just, no, it's like a nice joined up handwriting. That's that one there. And then I've got these two pieces here, which are nine and a half by six, and that's to cover, again, the front and back. And then this is to cover the base, and this is 12 by five and a half. Okay, so first of all, you want your two side pieces and your two side pieces of chipboard. I'm gonna pop my base to one side 
and we will work on those pieces later. So okay, so I'm going to be using the Kalau book binding glue. Since using this now, I don't need to add any double sided tape or anything. So like when I was making mini albums, I would cover this in double sided tape, then some liquid glue and then stick it all down. But since using the Kalau, I'm just not even needing to. It's so strong. It's got such a strong grip. And again, I mean, it's book binding glue, so you know it's going to be good. So all you want to do, first of all, is I'm just going to add some glue onto the back of this. Make sure it's all covered. And you want to stick it in the center. As close to the center as you can get it. Don't worry if it's a little bit off. You don't, you certainly don't need to be measuring it. And then you want to stick this one down as well. So, just so while that's just grabbing, I'm going to go back to this one, flip it over and just make sure it's all stuck. Okay, and then what you want to do is just go and fold the sides, just like you would any mini albums. You've seen me do this a lot in my tutorials. And because this is a two mil chipboard, it's got, you know, obviously it's got that depth to it. I'm just gonna burnish the sides there and then come up the bottom ones there as well. You just wanna to start to kind of get it into its shape like so. And then again with this one, Okay, so next you want to get your front and your back, the main ones. Don't worry about the decorative paper for now. And these are now going to start to act as hinges, okay? So what we want to do, pick one side, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go with this one here. And we're going to stick it, just glue on this bit here and stick this in here. But you want to make sure that you give yourself a gap that is the depth of your grey board and a little bit more. So this is two mil, so I'm basically, I'm probably ending up giving that probably a gap of about one eighth of an inch. And the way to test it is lift it up, bring it up, and you want it to be able to join perfectly there, okay, without it putting any tension. You would be able to feel it if it was. So I'm going to pop some glue just, you know, along the, the height of the grey board. So just in that section there, okay. I'm just going to spread that out a little bit, like so, and then I'm just going to lay that down. You can always bring that up just to check and then lay it down and you know that's where you want it to be. The key part here is making sure that this is all lined up and straight. So if I line it up with my mat there, you can see I've got everything nice and straight. So while that's kind of gripping, I'm going to get my next one here and you want to do the same. So you want to just pop this is very thick glue. I need it to kind of stay upside down actually, because it takes a while for it to uh, work its way down. There we go. And again, I'm just going to spread that out. Just spend a bit of time making sure that you got it where you want it and it's completely stuck. Okay, so both of those now can come up. Can you see I've got a really nice join inside? Then we want to do the same on this end here. So I'm going to grab my glue. Okay, and then this one is now going to stick on there. So you can see what we will have is our case like this. Okay, so I'm going to add some glue on this one here. And kind of sit that one. Actually, I'm just going to trim that little bit off of there, just a few little random bits there, but you can sit it on top of the grey board there, because this one you don't need to worry about the gap because that's it, now it's in place, it's in its 3D form, that's how it's going to be. Okay, so that's now where you should be. Then it's up to you how you want to do the next bit. I like to stick these over like so, because they will now fit that area and be the same height as these papers underneath. Or you can trim and cut into these pieces now before we do the next bit. Like I said, I think it's better to stick this on, stick all of this onto the tops of this and then cut it so you haven't got these like loose. So it's up to you. But I'm now going to add glue on the strips all the way down. 
And then on all of this. And then make sure you got your paper up the right way. And then I'm just going to lay that down and then flip it over. I'm just going to hold it there for a minute just to kind of let everything settle in again for that glue to grip. Okay, and then flip it over. Again, making sure you've got it all up the right way and you want to stick the other one down exactly the same way. Okay, so now you should have something like this. I'm now going to leave mine to one side because it is still drying and then you want to bring in your base and we're now going to do pretty much the same thing again. So flip that over, you're going to add glue all onto this and stick it in the middle just like we did with the sides. Okay, and you would have just seen me there, just go around the sides again like you did before. It just helps when you do go to fold them all over. Now we're going to just basically cover this, so all you need to do now is just bring in your corners so you get a nice right angle, okay, and you get that triangle shape. Just fold them all over, you're going to add glue underneath. This is just how I cover all my mini, ma mini, mini, all my mini albums. I just prefer doing it this way. And then um, you can obviously cover them with your metal corner protectors. I am actually waiting for some more to come. I go through them so quickly. I'll just show you again here. Once we stick this piece all down, then you'll add these ones. But um, yeah, once they come, then I can add them on at a later date. So now you just want to pop some glue all in that triangle section. Okay, and then just... Kind of hold two at a time and just let it grip onto the grey board. Probably do them as well at the same time. Okay, and then you should have your glue still tacky underneath these pieces. If you just push your bone folder or a ruler into the side of the grey board, this piece will naturally want to start to lift, which is all good. It all helps when we go to bring those sides up. But the glue will obviously stick to the side of the grey board and you want it to look like a vacuum pack. So you can see there where it looks like it's sucked around the, uh, the grey board there. I just think it gives it a really nice finish. And then you can just stick those pieces down like so. So that's now what you want to have. So that's all secure. And then all we've got to do is fold over those edges. Again, I am using a strong cardstock. So it's a little bit, obviously, harder to push those bits around. But if you've got a lighter... 200, 160, then you know it will be nice and easy to do that. Okay, now you should find that these bits will all start to you know easily wrap around. So you just want to add some glue. You can add it onto there if you want. I'm just going to add it onto the the grey board itself, and then we'll cover the middle part that you'll be still be able to see the grey board through with some paper in a minute and uh, that is the base done. Okay so there's the top of my base and then underneath I've just gone and stuck this piece here which was ten and a quarter by three and a quarter. Just check that was right. I did measure it. Yeah, three and a quarter. Yeah, because it's ten and a half long. Um, it's, it was a bit of scrap. I'm not too worried that it doesn't match. But now, if you want to go ahead and put your metal corners on, pop them on, turn it upside down. I always like to put a little cloth or something and hammer them down so they obviously flatten against it. But I really like that. Like I said, it's a really nice font. So now this piece here, which is dried nicely. So... Make sure you've got it the right way up, so that's going to be the back, I want that nice bloom on the front. So we're going to work on the base first of all, so I'm just going to grab my snips, and you just want to basically just, well, first of all I would just cut up, to. if I go in from this way actually it's easier, just cut up to the corner but not quite up to it, so I'm leaving maybe about one eighth of an inch. Okay, and just do that on all of the corners. We'll take a little bit of bulk off in a minute, but if you do it step by step, then none of you are cut into it too much. 
and um, reveal any of the grey board because you want to keep that hidden. So I'm just cutting in there. Now we're going to fold all these in on each other but what will happen is, is there's going to become some, you will get a little bit of buckling there. So what you want to do is just still keeping straight but just, if I just do this one and then show you, you basically just want to remove like any of the fold, like the crease. So you're just taking a very small amount off and if I do this one here and show you what it's like when I fold it in, that's what you want to achieve. So you just want to take away small amounts like so and then this is going to fold in. So see what I mean? Because once it hits against that bit of grey board, which is fine, you want it to be a snug fit because you don't want to see any of that. So now can you see that's folded in really nicely and we'll add glue under that in a minute. So if I go to this side so I can then do the rest. So I would just cut either side of the fold and then remove, like I said, any of the creased parts because that's just going to cause you bother otherwise. I mean this is the base so practice on the base first because you're going to do exactly the same as this on the top but because you know this is the base you're not going to see if you did reveal any of the grey board so do that's why I said do this one first and then I'm going to take a bit more off of this one here like so and then that one is going to fold in there but again you want it to be nice and tight All right. and that one and I can fold that one in and then fold that one in actually the base ones you're not going to glue to the sides the top ones you will and then we're going to cover the inside as well but you just want to fold those ones in like that because this is going to become our base but we're going to cut the top the same so you still need to do that that's what you now want to, want to have. Then I'm going to add, I'm going to use my normal Kalau now. So I'm just sticking paper to paper. So I'm just going to pop some glue under these pieces here and just stick them down. Keep it nice and square. You might have to pop your finger under there or you can turn it upside down. Actually, what I might do is I'm just going to, because this Kalau gives me a bit of time, if I just do that. And that one. I'm going to hold them there for a second. I've just quickly cut this piece here, which is two and a quarter by nine and a quarter, and it just covers that area. So I'm just going to run, it doesn't matter if I do it on this side, because I'm going to cover the inside as well. Again, I'll talk you through all this, just follow what I'm doing, and all these measurements will be in my blog anyway, as normal. It'd just be easier to do this because what you can do is stick that like that flip the whole thing over although there'll be some glue there but you can go in now and you know you've got something to actually push against and just make sure that all gets stuck down and we're going to cut another piece on top of this we're going to cut pieces for the inside so it all becomes very neat so while that's just setting you want to do the same now on the top here so just go around those corners like you did before and just remove any of the bulk. Again, just push in all of those. Yes, yeah, so if you can see anything scratching against it, then just take that away because you'll see what kind of starts to, like I say, buckle. Like all that there was all catching, so I can remove all of that much better. Okay, and then once we cut our pieces for inside and the base, it will completely be an encased. Piece and I think it'll look really nice but that's the front because I love that big bloom that you can see. So now you want to add some glue to all four sides of this. So again I'm going to go back to the book binding glue and get them all stuck down. Okay so that's all secure, it's all getting nice and strong now and it's nearly ready for us to stick to the base. But first of all, you just wanna cover the insides. It's completely optional. I don't always, because this one is being given as a gift, then I am going to. I did with my one as well, but some of my other storage ones I haven't because yeah, it's only me. But basically, these pieces now need to go inside, but you need to just, I've cut them just under two and a half for the side pieces. Okay, so you can see there, it's about two, it's actually two and three eighths, but I'm gonna come in a little bit more again. But the idea is, 
but you don't see any grey board. So when you put it in, you want it to be as tight to the sides as possible, like so. There we go. Okay, so, and then I've done it three and three quarters. Okay, so it goes right down to the bottom and then you've got that showing. So you want two pieces like that. You might have to just play around with your, with your actual widths. And then this one's for the base, and I did check that one, and that one was okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, get that one out. This one was two and three eighths by, should have got my longer one out, nine and three eighths. Okay, and that's going to go along the base, and then these two bits are for the side. So they're the same width as the other ones, which is three and three quarters, the same as them. But the length of these ones, again, is, yeah, it's about nine and three eighths, slightly, maybe just slightly over. But that now should, yeah, go in there. You want to get it as tight a fit as possible. You see there? It just looks quite nice. So I'm going to get all them stuck down, get the base stuck down, and then cover that in glue and stick that onto your base. Okay, so there it is, all finished. It's so strong now. It's just like those chipboard or cardboard storage pieces that you buy in the shops. It's as strong as that, so why not make your own and then you can use your lovely, beautiful papers. So that's the front there. I'm not gonna put any ribbon on and I will do the corners when they arrive. I think I'm just gonna leave that and let my mum decide if she wants to put something on it. She might not want a bow, she might just wanna keep it plain like that. You can also make multiple of these and put them on a larger base. So that's how I've done my six by six and eight by eight paper storage. Again, it's all in that playlist, so go and check it out. But also, I was just thinking about other things that you can put in here and things that I've got that fit. I've got these mats here, which I use sometimes as replacement mats for my die cutting, but also my smaller, Stamp Perfect, that fits in there really nicely, perfectly. I've got more plates, I've got plates coming out of my ears, but also my EK Tools, that one fits, no, that can go that way. So it's, yeah, it's a really handy piece and it fits perfectly on your desk as well. But you can see there, even with all of that, and this is heavy, heavy pieces, it's not rocking, it's not falling over, you know, it's really supported, so. Yeah, chuffed to bits with these. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it's inspired you. If you have, as always, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.